This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have a very special guest. We've been friends for 25 years. I ran into him, I believe, in Washington, D.C. with um, Steve Forbes. We're at a dinner with James Dale Davidson. He was talking about the sovereign individual. And I've always followed Jim. Jim was one of my heroes of all heroes because he's the author of Investment Biker. I mean, imagine riding a motorcycle around the world. You know, I mean, holy gamoly, what an experience. And then he drove his car around the world and he wrote hot commodities. And so we've been kindred spirits, but he is one of my mentors, one of my teachers and person I look up to. So he's on the program today. Um, and we're gonna talk about a very important subject for those who are really interested in getting rich. It's history. You know, how important is history, financial history to figure out where we are today in 2021. And so Jim and I are gonna be talking about history you know, such bubbles as the South Sea bubble, the Tulipomania bubble, the gold rush of 1849. And what's happened in all of these bubbles, because we're in a mania today. It's a mania. And if we don't respect history, we'll repeat it. So welcome to the program, Jim. I am delighted to be here, uh, Rich Dad. One of my <laughs> great pleasures is talking with you. So let's, let's do it. I do want to just say though, you know, history is extremely important to me. Uh, and, and the main lesson of history, by the way, is that people do not learn the lessons of history. Right. So it'll right. be good for you and I to have, have this discussion. I will tell you, I sometimes speak at universities and they say, well, what should we study? I say, well, if you want to be successful, you should study history and philosophy. And they say, no, no, we want to be rich. I say, if you want to be rich, you should study history no matter what your field, because it will teach you everything you need to know. It's all happened before, it's all gonna happen again. Uh, and they all get look a little confused and lost and say, what about accounting? I say, okay, history is more important. You can, you can learn accounting, history is more important. Yeah, you can hire the accountant for you. Yes, exactly. If you know your history, you can afford six accountants. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know, Jim, this thing about boom, bust, and manias. There was Tulip and Bone Mania, South Sea Bubble. There was a collapse of the Roman Empire, collapse of the Chinese Empire. There was the Weimar Republic, you know, that they printed trillions of dollars. There was Zimbabwe. There was uh, Havana or uh, Castro. What historical event do you th think about when we think about today? What historical event would you relate to today? Well, since we're talking about, you know, money, uh, the most important thing these days that I think, well, not the most, but one, is clearly the, the bubbles we've had before in the world, not just the U.S. The U.S. didn't invent bubbles. You know, SPACs are coming around. At the end of every bull market, SPACs come around. But Robert, SPACs have been around for 300 years. We didn't invent back SPACs. But when things are exuberant and crazy and wild, <coughs> along come SPACs again. Along come a lot of young people f fleeing into the market and say, oh, my God, this is easy. This is fun. I'm going to be rich. And they tell all their friends how fast they're going to get rich. It's all happened before. And the Bitcoin conference was just over. Uh, Maria Bartiroma had me on her program speaking about Bitcoin. Stuart Varney had me on the program start, talking about Bitcoin. And the only reason I know anything about Bitcoin is because I studied history. Yep. Right. So yeah. what, how do you relate? I mean, you know, the Weimar Republic is very obvious because that gave, that was 1918 and gave rise to a guy named Adolf Hitler in 1930 because it printed so much money. And that's similar to today. What other events do you think about? As I say, I mean, this has all happened before, before Richard, 1968, there was a huge bubble in the U.S. And in those days, the hot thing were computers. If you were a company, you put computer in your name and your stock went through the roof. You could be a laundry. Didn't matter. <laughs> if you call yourself the computer laundry, the stock skyrocketed. 
Uh, and that's what's happening again with with SPACs and, and cryptocurrencies. I mean, this is, I've seen this movie. I know how this movie is going to end. You do too, obviously. Uh, for anybody who has read any history, and spe specifically financial history, since that's what we're talking about, it's not my first rodeo. So what, so what other events come to mind? You know, like this is like the gold rush, 1849, the 49ers. A lot of people got rich. A lot of people got poor also. But it was also, it improved America. You know, expanded America. Whereas the Weimar Republic brought to power Adolf Hitler. Well, I, I'm not suggesting that Adolf Hitler was good for the world. He, <laughs> thought, he, he, he thought he was good for the world. Uh, for, fortunately, history has a different view. If he were around, he could read history and he would see that uh, most of us re realize he made a, a few mistakes. But I mean, think about what, and, and what you were just talking about. You know, think about the bubble at the end of the century, the 1999, 2000. Microsoft is still here. Apple is still here. These stocks were huge bubbles at, in 1999. They did survive, fortunately, and it made us all better off. But many did not survive, and that's what people need to learn most of all, that most of them did not survive. And you better be careful and you better be smart because likely you're going to lose everything. And that's one of the things that people do not understand now is most people are going to lose huge amounts of money when this all comes apart. So and just it's a gem, to, it's, so gem, right? just, because you, you, you brought up, you know, the dot-com boom bust. Remember that was, <laughs> that was pets.com. There was Y2K. There was all of that going on simultaneously. And I was just talking to this friend of mine who went to the Bitcoin program and every Bitcoiner is the next Bitcoin. That's like every dot com was going to be the next Amazon. And, and what I tried to tell her, I said, most of them won't be around. You know, maybe one or two cryptos will survive. Who knows? But the odds are most of the, everybody's throwing their money. That's why it's booms, bust and mania. <clears throat> People are nuts right now. Look at real estate. Look at real estate. It's nuts. That was well, 2008 again. And it's, I'm glad you bring up real estate because it's happening everywhere. If you go to Korea, you go to New Zealand, you go to many places, they're all saying the same thing. You got to buy it. You got to buy it. You got to buy it now. And part of the reason they're saying that is because the interest rates are the lowest they've been in world history. Now, you and I both know that when interest rates go low, 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 People say, I got to buy some property. Well, that's great. That's great. But interest rates also will go higher, as they always have, and they always will. And when they do, real estate may not be such a hot thing. You may get it right, but most of your friends and neighbors will not get it right. And that is a lesson of history. Well, there's also another lesson in history, Jim, that we all know is called you buy when there's blood in the streets. Oh, Yeah. And that's, and for guys like you and me, that's the best. Like just now I was down at uh, Nordstrom's or Saks. The sale rack is packed. You know, things that were like a hundred dollars or like 1995. That's the best time to buy. Yeah, I want to go, I want to go. <laughs> you know, I would, but you and I know that's the best time. That's the blood in the streets. So history, there's booms, busts, manias followed by blood in the streets. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. This, this person's trying to buy one of my properties and they're offering me, I think I paid 2 million for it. They offered me 9 million for it. Sell. I would, except that I'm attached to it, Jim. But I don't need the money either. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's like I bought Bitcoin. Just to, I just tracked it down from two, uh, 20,000. I, I got interested at 20. It tracked to three, got to seven, that I knew the momentum was building up. So I picked it up at nine. And so what's it gonna do? I said, I don't really care right now because I'm still in the money, but I bought it on sale. And that's what smart investors do. Is that correct, Jim? Well, of course. I, I mean, I'm not the first to know that you buy low and sell high. <laughs> that's easy. The hard part, Robert, as you know, is what's low, what's high. Yeah, any of us can, I can say those words, 
But the problem is what's low and what's high. Back to cryptocurrencies, hundreds of them have already disappeared. I mean, we don't hear about the hundreds that have disappeared and gone to zero. But now there are thousands of these things. I'm not smart enough to have ever bought or sold any of them. I'm, I wish I were as smart as you. That's why you're a rich dad. Yeah. You know, why I'm on your show. Uh, but the same thing is going to happen in the end. Um, and th the same words, we've all heard them before. Oh, you don't understand. It's different this time. It is so different now. Well, okay, I hope it is, but it never has been different. It's never been different before. As I say, hundreds of them have already disappeared. And maybe six of them or maybe 60 of them will last forever. But it's not my first bubble. So let me ask a, a lesson in history then. Okay, there were two manias that I studied, not that good, but I read, it, read into them. One is tulip mania. And the other was the South Sea bubble. What do you, re <laughs> the only thing I remember about tulip mania was that everybody was buying these tulip bulbs and then somebody ate one for dinner. <laughs> so Jim, I don't, I don't remember the finer points of the bubble, but I do remember this guy mistook it for an onion and he ate like a $10,000 tulip bulb. <laughs> well, I, I hope I someday have a $10,000 tulip. I will not sell it. I, I will not eat it. You know, I will. I will use, I'll plant it or something. Who knows what, what I will do with it. But no, when I, back to, I said before, SPACs came, you know, the first SPAC was back in those days and the offering prospectus said, we're not going to tell you who you are, but we're smart people, successful people. We're not going to tell you what we're going to do with the money, but we're going to do good things with your money. And so therefore you should give us all the money you can and someday we'll make you a lot of money. It literally said it literally said those words, and people gave them a lot of money. Right, that's a mania. I would call that a mania. You and I understand enough history that that's a bubble, that's a mania, whatever you want to call so it. So, would you explain the difference between a SPAC and an IPO? Then the name, if you call <laughs> it a SPAC, all right, it's like I told you before about the laundry company that it changed its name, it became wildly successful. And that's the main difference of a SPAC and an hobby. Sure, there are technical differences, et cetera. But it's, so people are just jumping in because it's a SPAC and they think they're gonna get rich and they, I've heard, I've heard nothing but bad things about them. I don't even know what they are. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter what they are. Well, why are you so being so smart? <laughs> you know? I don't do that. If you were, if you were really smart, smart, you would say, Rich Dad SPAC, <laughs> and everybody would buy a Rich Dad SPAC. Hey, you know how smart I am, Jim. Once I met you, I put, I put richdad.com. <laughs> Clever man. Clever lad. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should buy richwife.com. You know, whatever. <laughs> I've considered it. <laughs> Richgirlfriend.com. I've, I've considered that, too. Hey, I have a quick question, though. Since you did ride the bike and drove all over the world, my question is, you know, people say this is different this time. This time, is it different that the whole world is so on the same bubble? Is that, before the it, crashes were local, now it's global. Well, no, well, the crashes, yes, yes, yes. It's, that's partly because of the internet and communications and all the rest of it. But in the past, the, the 1929 bubble, was a crash that affected everybody. I mean, the English collapsed. Austria, the greatest, one of the greatest banks in the world, collapsed in 1931 because of the bubble. And it led to Hitler, et cetera, et cetera. We know the rest of that story, uh, the Second World War, <laughs> and the end of many people and, and co companies and fortunes, et cetera. So no, it always works the same way. The names change, the circumstances change to some extent. Uh, now we call it SPAC. We don't call it the South Sea miracle or the Mississippi land miracle, which is what they called it in those days. Um, but it's all the same thing. If you just read your history carefully, you will see. It has happened many times and it is, I remember in the bubble in, in 1999, 
if you went to the dentist, the receptionist didn't want to talk about teeth. She wanted to talk about the stock market. And it's the same now. You, no matter where you go, people want to talk about SPACs or cryptos or all of these things that are new and hot and all of their friends are talking about that they never heard of before. <laughs> and I will say something like, oh, yeah, it's happened many times in history and it's always ended badly. I said, wait a minute, you don't understand. It's different now. This is nothing new and different and exciting. <clears throat> and I say, yeah, you're right. I don't understand, but I have seen this movie before. So when we come back, I'm going to take a quick break, but I, you know, you wrote the book, Hot Commodities. You and I are the same wavelength there. You know, I make a lot of money in food, oil, gold, silver, mining, the industrials. <clears throat> but the thing, um, my, uh, <laughs> one of my friends is investing in plywood. So I'm going, why plywood? His, his garage is filled with plywood. He said, because the, I said, the price is, I said, he said, the price is going up. I said, well, silver stores a little bit better than plywood. <laughs> but he is so convinced he's cornered the market on plywood. So we come back, you know, what we're going to talk about is the cure for the disease called booms, busts, and mania. Because in my opinion, we're one of the biggest manias the world has ever seen right now. So we come back, we're back with Jim Rogers. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And please leave us a review when you listen. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason. We make no financial recommendations. <clears throat> Don't say we bought, we told you to buy anything, but we are an education company and we suggest if something interests you, listen to this program again and listen to it, friends, family, especially business associates and discuss because it's a very important subject. I have a very dear friend, Jim Rogers, known for about 25 years. I followed him via his books and then met him in person and we go to seminars together and we speak. And he's one of the wisest men on earth. And uh, he's I mean, he's a wise man because he knows his stuff. And when he, when I read his book, Investment Biker, I wrote around the world. God, I went, what a glorious adventure that must have been. Then he drove a Mercedes around the world, which meant his income had gone up. But anyway, <laughs> he is a man. He is, he is today's modern, you know, Indiana Jones has been around the world to see the world change. So we're talking today about booms, busts, <clears throat> and manias. And I think we're in a mania today. And mania is the worst thing you can be in. And also, before we end this program, we're talking about what can you do when the mania turns into a bust. So welcome back, Jim. I am delighted here. We're all, I anyway, I'm looking for how this is going to end, when it's going to end. You and I are both looking for signals. I told you about going to the dentist and the receptionist wanted to talk about stocks. Recently, I went to the chiropractor. The same thing happened. She wanted to talk about stocks. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this has happened before. Now, Robert, I will tell you how we're gonna know when this uh, crypto bubble is gonna end. Someday you're gonna, or let, let's do the SPACs first. Someday there's gonna be a rich dad SPAC and it's gonna be wildly successful. It's gonna go through the roof. And I will say, getting close to the end, but the real <laughs> end will be, the real end will be when there is a poor dad SPAC. And it goes through the roof, and it's very exciting. And everybody says, poor dad, I want to buy, I want to buy. That's when we will know it's all over. I just, I love that recommendation. I think it's a good one. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, as I say, we've both seen this movie before. But we also study history. You know, if you're going to study something like we're talking about, you study history and philosophy. You know, to philosophy, to me, our guys like, you st I studied Marx. He was an interesting character. And Lenin. And, and Hitler and Mao. But I also studied the great other capitalists like you know Ford and those guys, and they thought differently. So it's a matter of the way you think. And my concern is today, like I said, this is June of 2021, the crypto convention is on. And this friend of mine just went to the crypto convention. I said, what happened? And she's a body worker. You know, She does massage therapy, she's really good and all this. But as she was massaging me, she always talked about crypto. She says, I'm making a fortune. I'm making a fortune. 
So I was glad for her. You know, she charges like 150 for a massage, but she's making a fortune in Bitcoin and Ethereum and Doge and everything like this. So she comes back from the convention. I said, what happened? She said, somebody stole my wallet. <laughs> history. I told you, you should tell her to study history. <laughs> no, I, I hated, I, I, I couldn't laugh because here she's worked five years to put together this wallet. I don't even know what she's talking about. You know, I'm so old. I don't know what a crypto wallet is. She said, this is the funny part, Jim. So she called the Phoenix Police Department. And they said, what? <laughs> she says, that's a federal offense. She says, well, they don't even know what it is. I said, I mean, how, do you, how in the world do you steal a crypto wallet? I have no idea. Well, I'm not smart enough. I'm not, I'm too old to know how to steal a crypto wallet. <laughs> but as I said, it's it's history. It always happens this way. It always happens this way, whether we like it or not. And it, it, when you do your poor dad wallet and it booms, your poor dad crypto, you let me know, okay? So, so Jim, the other thing we talked about was that with every uh... – and the other part about history is always blood in the streets. And so I just wait for blood in the streets. The reason we moved to Phoenix was because the place crashed. And I, we, we, you know, 25 years ago, Kim and I moved to Arizona. We bought the best real estate at the best prices possible. And now we look like geniuses. And everybody wants to buy our property. We don't, probably we don't need to sell. So my question to you is, Jim, in your crystal ball, okay, we, we have oil, we have gold, we have food and things like this, commodities which you and I are you know, joined at the hip with. I love things you can use. So what would you say to the person right now to prepare for the mania already in it, but what happens when this bus comes and it will come? Well, first of all, as I, I'm gonna answer your question twice. First, as I look around the world, bonds are clearly a bubble. Bonds have never been this expensive in the history of the world. Now, you can tell me it's different this time. I'll say, okay, Rich Dad, I'm glad to hear it's different this uh, time. Uh, I know. I would, Jim, I would never say that. I don't like bonds. Okay, well, I'm going to say to you, bonds have never been this expensive in the world, and I would not buy bonds because they're clearly, to me, a bubble. Then you look at property. You mentioned property, Phoenix, uh, Seoul, go to Seoul, go to New Zealand, go many places. And they cannot buy enough property. I mean, they all desperately want property. And I point out something unpleasant, like, well, interest rates are the lowest in history. Maybe that's one reason property is so expensive right now. They said, no, no, you don't understand. It's different this time. So, oh, so, and then I said, oh, what about stocks? And they will tell me, oh, my God, yes. Have you heard about the SPAC? Have you heard about the whatever? And I will say, well, that sounds strange to me. That sounds like maybe it's a bubble. Maybe it's a mania. And they look at me like, what's a bubble? <laughs> what's a mania? What are you talking about? This is the new thing. And again, all of these things have happened before. So, Robert, the only thing that I, and not all stocks are a bubble, by the way. There's still some stocks that haven't gone. I mean, Amazon goes up every day. Tencent goes up every day. Samsung goes up every day. But there's still some stocks around the world that haven't gone up. And that's why I'm, my time is always bad, but I don't think the end is here yet. But back to what I, my discussion, the cheapest asset class I know are commodities. I mean, silver is still down 50% from its all time high. Sugar's down 70% from its all time high. That's not a bubble. When something's down 70%, it's hardly a bubble. So I, as I look around the world, the cheapest asset class I know are commodities. Not everything, of course, but no, I mean, that's that's where I see the opportunities. So, so Jim, you know, I was talking to this young woman who lost her uh, crypto wallet. I don't know how somebody steals a crypto wallet, but that's far, I can barely use a cell phone, much they steal somebody's wallet. I said, why don't you buy silver? It's, just, it's too boring. <laughs> But you know, I'm glad you said that because I often speak to that places and I say to them, you want to get rich? Be boring. Be boring. Find your boring things that you that you know a lot about. And this is the second part of my answer to your question. Stay with what you know 
and you will get rich. If I told you you can only have 20 investments in your life, you wouldn't jump around all the time. You wouldn't buy the latest crypto, the latest back, the latest anything. You would stay with what you know. And that's how you survive all of this. And they say, boring. I say, you want to be rich? Be boring. Be boring. So what do you think? Um, <clears throat> what are you watching? Like, like I, I am loaded with gold, silver, Bitcoin, and bullets. Do you realize you can't get bullets today? And it's, you can't even buy silver today. So do you know anything about that? I mean, I, silver, the price of silver is still suppressed, but you can't buy it at the retail level. Do you know what's going on there? I have a little bit. You, I'm maybe, sure you do, <laughs> maybe at all. Okay. Maybe at all. And I'll, I'll, I'll part with some of my silver. Speaking of silver, the all time high on silver is 50 US dollars an ounce. I expect it to go back to 50 sometimes during in the next few years as things get really bad. Oh, go. I, I buy gold and silver. I own both. I'm not buying at the moment, but. I expect gold to make new all-time highs. I certainly expect silver to make new all-time highs too, for many reasons. But Robert, as you know, I mean, silver is now used in solar energy and electric cars and all kinds of things. I'm just some simple peasant who wants it for the hard times. But there are a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people who use it in electric cars and solar panels and stuff like that. So you should find that lady who lost her wallet. You know, we should, we should also learn how to steal wallets. If we really, if we wanted to, I don't even, I barely know what a wallet is, much less how to steal it. That's, but, that's, that's what I said to her. I'm so old, I wouldn't know how to steal one. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to find it. You know, much less how to steal it if I found it. But, but I do. Funny, she called the Phoenix Police Department and they go, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Leave us alone. <laughs> You know, I, as I said, we've all seen this before, but I will stay with boring silver. Um, she can have That's her watch. Question, why is there a shortage of it? Or is that manufactured? Because you know more, that's, that's my market, gold and silver. I love gold and silver. I started a silver mine in Argentina and a gold mine in China, which they took. But I saw the silver mine. Well, if you know another good silver mine, don't please don't say it on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a private email, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why I, I, got stuff in my, I got it in my pocket, but I'd like some, you know, so in the ground too. Right. If I, well, I understand. I, that I understand. But about a quick, quick question, Jim. If the demand is so high, why is the price so low? Well, I, I read on the internet that there are guys who say there's a big sh uh, short position in silver. You know, the same guys who did the short squeeze uh, recently it did some stock. So now they've said, oh, there's a big short position in silver too. But that's the way commodity markets work. Yes, everybody who sells a future is selling short because he doesn't have to deliver the stuff. But so, these people have run around and said, oh, there's a big short, uh, big short position in silver. Let's squeeze silver. That's a little bit harder to do than to squeeze the latest hot stuff. I, as what I read, that's why, and they all ran out and bought silver, coins, bars, etc. And that's why there's a shortage. I mean, I hope the short, I hope they squeeze it. I hope they squeeze it to a thousand. Robert. Go for a thousand. Yes, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm skeptical. They're not the first people. I mean, the Hunt brothers, I'm old enough to remember the Hunt brothers. They, quote, squeezed the silver market and drove it to 50 before they went bankrupt. This was, this was a family, by the way, that in the 1950s, there was a guy named H.L. Hunt, and he was the single richest person in the world. In the world. Well, along came his children. And they squeezed the silver market and they went bankrupt. There's another saying in, in actually in many cultures, rags to rags in three generations. First generation makes the money, second generation embellishes and the third generation loses it all. The Hunt brothers lost it all. So it's happened before. 
So let me, let's, let's end at this, okay? So it was in 1971, August 15th, 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and the dollar technically became debt or fiat currency. So 2021, August 15th is the 50th anniversary of the fake US dollar. How does that affect your thinking? Remember that day extremely well, by the way, uh, we were, uh, long Japan and short the US. And that Monday morning, oh my God, the Japanese market collapsed, the US market went through the roof. And we're sitting there, short the US and long Japan. Oh, my, that was a bad week. I remember it's etched in my memory uh, what happened. Well, it obviously affects my, my thinking. Never in the history of the world has, any, has central banks printed so much money, never. In history, has this happened that they're printing so much? And always in history, this ends badly. I mean, I, I don't particularly like saying it. I'm an American like you. <laughs> but I see what's happening. I've got children. I have to worry about them. Robert, it's a good time to be old in America because the old people get the advantages of all this. My kids, they're going to inherit a gigantic, gigantic problem from those guys in Washington. Yeah. Guys in Washington haven't read history. And the ones who have read history think they're smarter than history. They actually think they're smarter than history and they can control it. When you say red, are you talking about Marxism or just red state? Red Roman? Is that what's red? I'm thinking all, well, you know, speaking of Marxism, if I could, Mr. Marx had a great theory. It sounded wonderful. Lots of people liked it and tried it. Every time hard times came, they said, there's this guy, Karl Marx. He's got a good theory, a good way to solve all of our problems. And everybody would try it. I mean, you try it enough, you know, it, it's a total failure. Well, Robert, right now, there's another theory around <clears throat> which people are going to try. It's called MMT. It means more money today. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call it, more money. And we're going to try it. When things get really bad, the world is going to, in England, they're trying and they don't call it that. But when things get really bad, yeah, and they're going to try MMT. It's a wonderful theory. It sounds great. It's like Mr. Marx. It all sounds good. But history shows it doesn't work. And it's not going to work. Maybe it'll work for a while, just like Marxism tricked a lot of people. But be careful. Be very, hang on to your silver. What I call it is Marx money theory. Good. Well, that's another great, yeah. great answer. Yeah. But anyway, you know, Jim, I, I thank you for the years of friendship and guidance and wisdom and all that. So um, it's been, it's really been, really been fun. Unfortunately, everything we've been saying is coming true. I know. Well, is it fortunately or unfortunately? Uh, yes, it's unfortunate that this has happened many times in history. The outcome is always unfortunate, but the people who watch the Rich Dad radio show, listen to the Rich Dad radio show, will be prepared and they will come through it. I mean, the people who stay with what they know are the people who are knowledgeable. If you're knowledgeable, you get worried, and if you get worried, you, do, you take actions and you're prepared. Right. And that's why this program is about booms, busts, and maniacs but it's more about the study of history and as history proves, we don't learn anything from history. Yes, yes, yes. you learn something from rich dad. <laughs> yeah, from, from the rich old guys like us. Yes. Anyway, Jim, thank you very much for all the, all the years of friendship and wisdom and the guidance you put on the world. And thank you. Keep teaching. <laughs> thank you, Robert. Let's do it again sometime. I'm sure we will. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. I'm, I'm uh, sitting uh, here in quarantine. So anytime you want. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I'm in quarantine. Well, good for you. Stay quarantined. Stay healthy. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I I, 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 I had it. I had COVID and I just used the same thing Trump did. Hydroxychloroquine, vitamin C and sunlight. You did have the virus? Yeah. It's not and that bad. Still, and you're still alive? Well, I'm, I, I think I am. Last time I checked. <laughs> Go check anyway. yourself and then you'll know if you're still alive. Right, well, right, right. It's a miracle. Fantastic. Well done. Well, thank I, you. I hope I don't have to have the experience. That's why they put me in this quarantine. 
but, but I'll go out and sit in the sun as soon as it comes out. Yeah, that's, it helps. It helps. My friend, take care. Good Keep luck. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Keep up the good work. We need you. We Thank need you. We need you. And we come back, we'll be come with a little wrap up for the Rich Dad Radio Show. Once, once again, thanks to Jim Rogers, a friend of Rich Dad for years. Thank you. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money and a special thanks to a dear friend of ours, Jim Rogers. I mean, he's been friends for 25 years and I look up to him, he's a man of tremendous wisdom. He's the author of Investment Biker. When I read that book, I fell in love with him. As a man, this guy rode all around the world on a motorcycle, oh my God. I mean, you should see the path he took. You know, I get, I get scared going to town. He rode all around the world, through Russia, China, South America, Africa. Holy mackerel. Anyway, I can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And please listen to a review and whenever you can listen. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We have nothing to sell. We make no recommendations. <clears throat> you know, we talk about gold and silver, but we don't say buy it, or Bitcoin, or SPACs. Oh, we... Our purpose is to enlighten you, but please listen to this again. You'll pick up twice as much, but also have friends, family, and business associates listen to it and discuss this program, and you'll learn even more, and you may see a different world, <clears throat> possibly from the world from Jim Rogers, one of the wealthiest, most successful investors in the world. If you don't know his background, look him up. He is no ordinary dude. I can't mention his partner's name, but if you do, you'll know why he's such a smart guy. But anyway... Uh, before we end, I want some comments on it. So, Sarah, what did you think about the show? I mean, proving that we learned nothing from history. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was, um, I wrote down Jim's op opening line, I think, for the interview is, if you want to be rich, study history. Like, that's all you have to do, right? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> you don't need to be an accountant. You don't need to be a doctor. Study history. Yeah. Um, but then the biggest thing that I took away from it was we were talking about the bubbles at the end and real estate's in a bubble. Um, bonds are in a bubble. Stocks are in a bubble. He said the cheapest assets right now are commodities. Silver's below 70% below where at, where its high was. That's crazy. <clears throat> but he said, that's, I, could, he, I couldn't get, get, that guy is really smart. I mean, <clears throat> I couldn't get out of him. If the demand is so high, why is the price so low? Mm-hmm. I think he knows. I think he, I actually he think he's, if we look, listen back, I think he started to say, yeah. and then he caught himself for some reason. I don't know why. Well, if you found out, please look up his former partner. Yeah. His former partner is one of the most hated men in the world today. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that Jim and he are no longer talking to each other. It's like my partner, it happens in business. Yeah. The partners I don't talk to, I'll never talk to again. Yeah. But that's life, you know, just grow up here. <clears throat> but that, but I listen to guys like Jim because that, he is as wise as they come and as humble as they come. So what what else did you pick up? That's true. I you know wise and humble. Um, I thought that his his idea of stay with what you know. Um, you know we have all these speculators, right? These Bitcoin guys and things are getting hyped up for some reason. And he said, you can feel it. You can feel it in the air. But the only way to survive this is to stick with what you know. Well, what if you don't know anything? <laughs> well, you're screwed. <laughs> well, that's why this is a rich dad. Exactly, and all this. exactly. But the thing is, this is the bubble, okay? The bond market is at an all-time low, which is the biggest bubble. I mean, they dropped the interest rate, so you'll borrow money. That happened in 1971. They need you to borrow money. So the lower the interest rates cause a bubble in the stock market, the real estate market, the bond market, every market except commodities for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's To me, it's just, I don't have an answer for you guys. Right. But I have tons of gold and silver, I have Bitcoin and I have bullets. <clears throat> and that's what I've been saving all these years. Mm -hmm. But it's only because I studied history. You know, the Weimar Republic happened after 1918 and uh, Germany, and, I mean, France and England punished the German people and said, you have to pay us back for all this money, reparations. We're doing reparations today in America. Kamala Harris wants us to pay reparations to black people. Mm -hmm. well, history is repeating, but we can't say anything about it because we get censored. How dare you say that? <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's the most tragic thing that's going on. Then I studied the, uh, South Sea bubble and the, tu the tulip mania. Everybody thought that tulip bulbs kept going up. I mean, you and I know, go, how could they be that stupid? But 
the funniest story was the guy ate his tulip bulb. <laughs> I don't remember that much, but uh, I guess I'm not, not going to eat my tulip bulbs. So every time I go to the I go to the nursery store, I look at tulip bulbs, and I sort of crack up. But I'm laughing about history, mm -hmm. and as Jim says, history proves people don't learn from history. So anyway, Sarah, thanks very much. I want to thank Jim Rogers and for all your wisdom. I want to thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.